most of the complications that you have, any of the symptoms and the complications from hypoparathyroidism are almost completely invisible. When you have hypoparathyroidism, you don't really die from hypoparathyroidism. You die from all the side effects and the things that happen to you because of having hypoparathyroidism. I go three days a week to the hospital to get infusions. It's caused me to be disabled and I'm not able to work because I spend most of my time in the hospital. Um, you can get calcifications in your arteries, in your blood vessels, so that you can have a heart attack. It affects your heart. My kidneys are calcifying and I'm down to 35% kidney function. Either I'm gonna suffer the consequences of being hypopara to the point of the damaging effect of the calcium going too low, or I'm gonna suffer the consequences of my kidneys failing because of the calcium that I'm taking that's saving me. My daughter came along, she does have hypoparathyroidism. She had a severe calcium crash about six months ago. I immediately told the ER doctors that she has hypoparathyroidism and these are the, you know, these are the symptoms that she has. I pleaded with them, I was like, we need to check her calcium, figure out where it's at, and then we need to address the calcium first. And it's, it's a battle to try and get some of these ER doctors to understand that. Because it is a rare disease and they may not have seen it uh, ever or, or, or not very frequently. There's a ton of need for um, doctors to get educated on what hypoparathyroidism is and how to treat patients. I can't imagine what it must be like or what it would be like to not have the tetany anymore, the brain fog, um, the tingling. So to have the opportunity to have none of that and to feel normal again would be wonderful. I would be very grateful to have that experience.